1971 Hydrostream Panther and we found lots and lots of issues. Thank goodness we pulled the cap off. We have got a rotten transom as can be evidenced here. That's not how a transom is supposed to work. No sir. It's got strange holes in it. Now I didn't pull any nuts off the back of these. It looks like somebody maybe just threaded these on there to try to hold it together because this area is so rotten. There you go. Don't know what those were doing there, but uh, there's not supposed to be holes in the boat there. So that's something. We'll have to pull the glass off the inside here and fill the new transom. A lot of it's pretty solid. Still would have gone. Not front. All this was pretty solid. Delaminated. Bring that up. Just gonna replace all of this, I reckon. No reason to leave some of it when you've got some rot. And up here, you can see why we have rot. What do we got in here? Well, there's some evidence. There's a little piece of an acorn. Some sort of rodent got in here. There was a hole somewhere. And some amount of water was able to get in here. Now, it should be able to run to the back. But in this area, they didn't have a way for the water to escape. And there's no hole in the bottom here. This is all tabbed in on the bottom side. So it cooled. And it rotted this wood. We'll have to do a little different there. And we'll have to add at least one layer of glass to this. That's the bottom of the boat. Grind it all away and start redoing. Now, up here, we come into what in the actual... What, what is this? This isn't good fiberglass work. They really put these things out in a hurry and... I wonder if that was a whole layer that was supposed to go through this boat. I, I don't know what in the world that's all about, but that's not good. This piece is tabbed in. Probably will use half inch instead of this quarter inch. You get that a little better. There's just uh, a little bit of a drainage issue. Quite a few fiberglass issues. A transom issue, and uh, we're going to redo anything that's wood in here. So, I suppose the first thing is to do some rip in and get a grinder out, but before we get this tooth in, we're going to have to build a cradle. Something to really support this boat because, well, we're going to be down to nothing but a fiberglass shell that come off a of mold in 1971 so we don't want to break that and when we pull all this out this is pretty rotten oh it's very rotten there you yeah. go barely put a chop strand net with any glass on it at all on top of that that's, that's almost no glass there but that's where the rot came from I can imagine if we made ourselves a nice drain hole here and actually glassed this in properly before we put this bulkhead back, we can avoid that issue in the future. Plus, we'll do a little bit better job of fiberglass and stuff, yeah. You know, a few extra pounds of resin versus a rotten wood, boy, that'll just up the power on the motor to go faster, yeah. Because there's some wood on the inside of this, and we're going to re-glass that and make it all better. 
patch all of the holes. We're not going to leave a single hole in it. And then we can uh, build something real nice for this, a good cradle to truly support it. Well, I take everything out of there and re-glass all of that. Then we can have a boat truly worthy of going 100 miles an hour and being a classic hydro stream. There won't even be another one around that's fully restored like this one. A Panther from 1971, just ripping. Boy, I can't wait to get out on the water in it. So what's next for this hydro stream? Now that it's cut in half, is, well, a bit more tearing apart, and then uh, a whole bunch of fiberglass work. So here's the cap. We're going to have to patch all the holes in it, grind it down to the glass, probably add a whole layer of chopped strand matching fiberglass to the top of it before we gel it. Uh, the bottom, I'm sure there's wood in here that I'll have to replace and re glass, so it'll be flipped over and everything redone. This part's quite a bit more work. We've got to cut the whole floor out, the seat base. Right now I've just got to get this bulk and the rest of the way out. And uh, we're going to flip it over, set it on the ground, and build a cradle for it. Because once we pull the floor out, there's really not a lot of structure to this boat. So we'll have to sit in the cradle while we get all the fiberglass work done inside. Then we can carry on and re-gel it and rig it and just make it cool. So one thing about these boats, this isn't going to be very easy to just flip over. I really can't just grab this hook and lift the front and expect nothing bad to happen. It has a lot of flex in it. And there's, there's some weight back there. So what we're going to do is rig something with the hoist on the back and then just manpower. We're just going to have to have a few people kind of grab the sponsons after the backs lift it up and each side and flip it over and just do it. So this hole here is uh, the drain for the splash well. Now when I cut the top off this boat, the splash well where it was attached to the transom was the most difficult part because it was laminated so well and the transom wasn't rotten through here. It is rotten in other places but not here. So the bottom of the splash well laid here and I had to actually cut through the transom all the way up to where it was attached here. Not easy, but it all came out in one piece, so that's a win. Right now I'm going to stick a bolt through that drain hole and uh, make a spot so that I can attach the lift to it and we can go ahead and lift the back of the boat that way. Okay, we're on the finger or something, right? What are we on? There we go. Well, 
Well, it certainly wasn't easy, but we got the boat over without destroying anything. It's off the ground on some tires. And uh, we found a couple little surprises. Like, their paint job is interesting. You get to see a bit more of the gold color it used to be. There's a one-sided fiberglass patch. Evidently we hit something and put a hole in it at one time. <clears throat> but that's okay. We'll fix all that up. For now, we've got to scribe a cradle to this thing and then flip it over in the cradle. That way, we can take care of the inside first, then flip it over again and paint it. Next time, maybe uh, we'll just have a lot more people skip the hoist and uh, get it on some sawhorses. But there she is, ready to have a cradle made. Forgot to mention, we got this super sweet 70s carpet on the bunks of this trailer. Wonder when they made this thing. So this is my ridiculous, I'm not a carpenter approach to scribing five pieces of plywood to the hull of this boat and then creating a cradle out of it. I've got some shrink wrap scraps and I cut them into very straight strips. I'm trying to maintain one clean edge. And what I'm doing is taping them to this board that I've got hung on the ladder, sliding it down, making the first cut or two. Then, so this is already uh, measured out, and I've got some marks here on my uh, boat so that it's measured out and straight across. And I get this plastic in place. And then what I'm doing is taking a razor blade, kind of folding it down on here, and slicing. I can slice right on the bullet because I'm going to read fiberglass and gel and everything on this anyway. Getting a template made out of this plastic that gets me started. Then just keep using a pencil and a compass and Keep taking a bit more off and using the jigsaw, then the belt sander, then the poem sander, and getting it to where I have a nice scribed piece of plywood. It's taken a very long time. I'm sure there's guys who could do this in a day and do it better. And this is just how I can actually accomplish it. It's working for me, so I'll kind of show you my way, I guess. plywood so that that's running down the center as sort of a spine. Keep it from moving and keep it stronger. Then I'm going to have to grab a buddy who can hold each piece level 
you know, scrape that through, notch it through, and they add some bracing and attach each one with a piece of plywood in, or a piece of two by four in between each piece of plywood. I think what I'll do is run a piece of bracing in here along this piece, and maybe one here as well in between each piece of plywood or two by four to really support this because when the floor is in there, it's pretty solid, yeah? But up in the front here where there's no floor, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but it flexes a lot. I mean, it's pretty soft. It, uh, it's not super solid. And I'm going to be removing the floor all through here. So once that happens, this is all going to be soft like that instead of rigid. So I think this cradle is going to hold us together here so I can tear the floor out, find out if there's any kind of stringers or other core material in there, replace it all, do what I think is right, add some fiberglass and uh, you know, make a cool boat that's going to go real fast. Keep thinking about what color you think this ought to be. I really want other people's opinions. It was this crazy gold, then they painted it this ugly red. I like blue and white. I like metal flake. I don't know. You tell me. First we gotta get it flipped over in the cradle and get the interior sorted. So that's a bunch of work in front of us still. Let's get to it. can't see right now and screw a 2x4 into the ends of them. You're going to have to get them level, measure it, cut it and screw it in. Then we'll take the ones from the middle three pieces that we notched, set them over it and get the level out, get those level and start putting bracing in. So here's the concept. What's left is to level these, tie them all together, brace it all up, then we've got to come in here and level the bottom at the correct height that I want it to be at. Take the cradle, flip it over, put it on the ground, pick the boat up, Flip it over and put it in the cradle. Time to level and brace my cradle up. First, I'm going to take all these little chunks of wood here and cut them into four inch pieces. What I'm going to do is put them here, get a good measurement on the bottom where I want these to be at so it will be easy for me to level this by myself. Attach them to the spine and to the piece of plywood. Then I'll keep that same measurement and put it here a piece for bracing on each side and repeat that all the way down so they're spaced correctly. Then I'll have the measurements and I'll probably end up putting one in the middle and uh, go from there. Just kind of make it up as I go here. So I realized a mistake I made. 
I'm going to have to actually level this instead of following the contour of the boat like I did so that my measurement stays the same. I'm only putting one screw in this for now and I'm not attaching these blocks to the plywood yet because I'm going to need to remove them to cut the tops level and at the height that I need them. So first I've got to remove this screw and push this up to level on both sides and then repeat the process so that I'm spaced out on each cell. So what's next is to mark a level line on the edges of the boat on the plywood so that I've got uh, those cut off. It doesn't need to be oversized. Keep it small and simple. Then I've got to make a mark on the edge, pick my height. Uh, I think I want to be able to lean over into it so you know somewhere in there and snap a line across all of them and then level across and cut them that way. So cut the edges of each board and cut them all to height so they're even and I've got a level surface to put the boat in. Then reattach my bracing, add a bunch more bracing and I'll be ready to flip it over and put the boat in the cradle. Let's get it. So the boat's not perfectly level on the ground. I had to really think about this a little bit. But what I did is measured up from the lip of the boat here, 36 inches on this board, made a mark, and carried that mark to all of the rest of the boards with a level. So now I've got a level line based on the boat on all five of the boards that make up the rib cage for my cradle. I'll repeat the process on the other side, then snap a chalk line between the two marks in here and cut them. Then I'll have my rack at the right height and it will come out level, I think. Then I'll add a bunch more bracing, probably run three 16 foot two bys across the back of it. Maybe I can use some snowmobile dollies so it can be moved around. Get some more bracing in there and I'll have my cradle. It's time to finalize the cradle. I had to go get a bit more lumber. But this has gone on for a couple full days now. So what I'm going to do is take these 16 footers, put them on the end with a block in here to attach them to, attach the block to the plywood, the brace to the block, one in the middle, one on each end. Then I'll add some bracing. I think I'm going to add a piece down in here inside each sponson to make sure that once I've removed the floor this doesn't become super malleable and crunch on me. And I'll add one in here at least for the first few sections to make sure that this piece stays rigid and maybe one on the bottom of the sponson. Then I'll add a vertical piece just for rigidity. I think I might be overbuilding this. I don't know. I'm just going to start doing it and see how I feel about it. It's worth noting that when I attach these to the blocks, I won't be necessarily leveling the plywood with the world as it sits. I'll be using the same measurements as I did for the bracing and the spine. Uh, this way Everything is level with the boat once I set this up.
over there? That's the one running around the other side over here. Yeah! 